department. Also, let me uh, welcome the Ngonyama Trust Board officials that are here with us, particularly the chair, Ubao Chajungwenya, and uh, their royal highnesses, Onda Bezita, uh, that form part of Ngonyama Trust Board. Welcome uh, to uh, this uh, afternoon session. Uh, Honorable Minister, uh, we had uh, invited uh, the department to join us on this session uh, of the Portfolio Committee so that uh, we can be able to ascertain uh, what the performance of programs with a focus on the achievement on set targets challenges and mechanisms put in place to address the weaknesses and challenges. We also requested to further highlight how the program performance in the quarters under consideration impacted delivery on service to beneficiaries uh, or clients of different programs of the Department of uh, Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development. Uh, a detailed account of the expenditure trends and outcomes with reasons for over or under expenditure and impact on the planned interventions and services delivery. The service delivery performance and detailed financial reports of uh, ALA, that being agriculture land holding account, and how expenditure outcomes have impacted on the acquisition and redistribution of land, as well as the status report regarding the implementation of the Auditor General of South Africa's recommendations, i.e. the improvement plan. And last but not least, the responses and progress report on the implementation of the 2019 Budget Review Recommendations Report. I will therefore, Honourable Minister, invite you uh, to uh, give us an opening address and then hand over to the officials that will be doing the presentation. I must say with this uh, put to the Honourable Minister, I have already had an indication from Honourable Stain that uh, the presentation has not completely or entirely addressed the issues raised by the committee on this invitation. But I would like to give the minister the benefit of the doubt in the sense that uh, she is going to give an opening address and she may be able to touch on the issues that we have raised. Therefore, I want to uh, request the, the minister to uh, then uh, uh, go on with the opening address and then also hand over to the uh, department. We will then have in hand both the presentation of the minister and the department be able to ascertain if all the issues we raised have been covered. Honorable Minister, over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson, Honorable Members of the Portfolio Committee, Members uh, of the Ingonyama Trust Board, Ondabe Zita, Senior Officials, uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Once again, Chairperson, I would like to thank the Portfolio Committee for allowing us to come and make a presentation to you as part of our accountability as expected by our citizens. Chairperson, though we are now the new configured Department of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development, we still have to account to you for quarter three and quarter four 
as the old Dr. DLR and old DAF. And that takes into consideration that we are actually continuing to account to you based on the annual performance and the budget that was expended to us as these two departments. Today, therefore, Chairperson, we will be dealing with the performance of quarter three, quarter four of Dr. DLR and Ingonyama Trust Board. In the last meeting, Chairperson and Honorable Members, after you reflected on our budget presentation, you, after your own reflection and observation, made particular uh, decisions and recommendations on what you thought were important matters. That in particular related to Ingonyama Trust. You actually raised your concerns about the number of uh, staff that are on precautionary leave, the vacancy rate. You also raised concern about the inability to indicate how the Ngonyama Trust uh, Board in its functioning support the empowerment of youth and women. You also indicated your displeasure at the fact that the Ngonyama uh, Trust Board did not put their budget uh, in time as is expected by our parliamentary rules. These were very important and very serious matters, uh, Chairperson and Honorable Members. I must therefore report to you that immediately what I did was actually to convene an urgent meeting with the Ingonyama Trust Board, and that meeting took place yesterday. To address the issues of concerns that as the portfolio committee you have raised, but also to deal with issues which emanate from the act in terms of the mandate of the board and our responsibility. We agreed, uh, Chairperson, that some of these matters might not be dealt with in our meeting yesterday, and we agreed that we will deal with those before the end of June. Chairperson, the Ingonyama Trust Board, when we met yesterday, had already sent to us their revised budget. They then explained to us what caused the delay that made all of us uh, to find ourselves coming to you without the budget as it was expected. They indicated to us that actually the precautionary leave of the senior officials in part emanates from this very reason and many others. The board has actually instituted an investigation on a broad range of issues that relates to the conduct and behavior of these officials. And as soon as that report, which they think is close to completion, is done, they will then indicate to us as the minister and I'm sure to the committee on what were the findings of that report and what remedial action are being put. We are therefore uh, dealing with the budget together with the board now. They've also looked at what is allowed in their regulation, that out of the resources that the board receive as uh, income for communities, 10% of that can go towards support the administration of the board. They also indicated that the increased uh, nature of the budget owes to the work that the board has to do working with the traditional councils to actually support their work. Some of that relates to issues of servitudes, of um, your network industries in particular, where the board working with the traditional councils must make necessary approvals and uh, decisions and leases thereof which would allow for those uh, servitudes. Secondly, they also indicated that, for instance, as the board, 
in the management of the trust and the trust land in particular, decisions on lease or not to lease in Gonyama trust land actually emanate from the traditional council's concern. And once the traditional councils with their communities agreed on such lease to be uh, given for whatever investments or other uses by even the community. It is at that point that the Ngonyama Trust Board actually issued those leases. But to reach that stage, there's a lot of engagement that happens between the board, the other stakeholders who may be interested parties, together with the traditional council. So that was the explanation, and we agreed that maybe in future, they are, the way they present the budget must be very transparent and clear so that the members of the portfolio committee can actually know what the board's activities are on a day-to-day -day basis that would account for the particular budget. Also, they indicated uh, to us, uh, Chairperson, that the inability to perform some of the expected uh, programs as it was highlighted by the portfolio committees relate to the budgetary issues, but at the same time, it is about this delineation of the responsibilities between the board, what the board must do in its management and what the traditional councils must do as the beneficiaries of the resources that accrue from the leases and the use of their land. We then agreed, Chairperson, that it would be important for both ourselves and the board to really go back to the legislation and look at what is the mandate of the Ingonyama Trust Board. Just to mention two things, Chairperson, which we agreed we need to deliberate on. One, in the Act, the Ingonyama Trust uh, Act, uh, as amended in 1997, actually states that the responsibility of the ITB is to administer the trust and the trust land and also deal with issues of lease, pledges, disposal uh, of the Ingonyama Trust land thereof. The other issue that emanates from that legislation says despite this responsibility of the board and the land in question, nothing stops national government to actually exercise its responsibility in respect to land reform, particularly, and it says after consultation with Ingonyam. So what we agreed is that we need to have a broad discussion so that we are at one about what the interpretation of this act is and our responsibility thereof. And how do we develop policies so that there is guidance on how the administration, the management of the trust land in particular is done so that there is transparency, not only to the board, but also to the stakeholders such as yourself as the portfolio committee was supposed to oversee our work. So we agreed, Chairperson, that we will meet before the end of June as the board and department to really go through these issues. And also, while we do appreciate that this may be the purview of the traditional council, but it will be good for all of us to know how the traditional council, when they receive the resources on the leases of their land, for instance, how do they work uh, and how do they empower their communities? The other matter they briefed us on was the litigation matter between the Tendele Coal uh, Mining Company and the community of, um, I'll say, I think it's Guamsane, if I'm right, and they did indicate that that was in relation to the phase two of the mining, which no approval or lease has yet been given. 
The contestation of the mine is that the community, particularly 24 households concerned, are actually demanding more compensation than, in their view, is fair and just. So that matter is still in the courts. We were so briefed by the trust. Chairperson, I want to say that in respect of the presentation by the Department in Quota 3 and Quota 4, there are indeed areas where spending did not go according to what we had all hoped we would. Part of that owes to the concurrence that needed to happen between ourselves and the Ministry of Finance. And that relates specifically to the matter of the stimulus uh, package. You would know, Chairperson, that the Department of Dr. DLR had actually indicated to this committee that as part of their contribution to the stimulus uh, package that was um, put in place by, or rather announced by President in 2018, there are about 262 farms that they said if they were revitalized by the state, Honorable Minister, are you still with us? Honorable Minister's screen seems to have frozen. Amuti Deza. Usa Kona. She's still on the line, Chair, but uh, she seems to have frozen. Yeah, I can see she's still on the line, but uh, there might be a network problem mm -hmm. on her part. Honorable Minister. She's off the line. She might be trying to connect again. Okay. Now, DJ. Good afternoon, Chair. The Minister has been I think the system had kicked me out. Okay, now we do have these technical glitches, uh, Honorable Minister. Don't worry about it. Uh, you may proceed. Thank you very much, Chairperson. I just want to indicate that in respect of that stimulus package, there was work that was already uh, done in terms of contracting certain commodity organizations to actually assist us to support those uh, farmers. However, we were then approached by Treasury to say the way in which we have undertaken our procurement processes will actually result in the audit uh, query and therefore we needed to change. So we worked with the Treasury to actually address those changes. And in October 30, we actually wrote a letter to seek concurrence with the Minister of Finance to be able to follow the process that was so agreed between us and Treasury. And I must say, Chairperson, that that process of approval from Treasury took longer. We received the letter of concurrence from the Minister of Finance on the 30th of December. At the time, actually it was the 18th of December, and at the time we could not continue with the procurement as it was expected. So I wanted to raise those uh, upfront, Chairperson, just as a highlight of some of the difficulties that you will note uh, in our presentation that would account why some of the issues that we had tabled in terms of our annual performance and the targets for quarter three and four were not achieved. Thank you very much, um, Chairperson, for those opening remarks on my side. I will now hand over to the uh, Director General.
Thank you, uh, Honorable uh, Minister, uh, for that uh, opening address. Uh, we'll then uh, uh, listen to the DG. Shaban. Chairperson, Honorable Members, Minister and colleagues, thank you very much. Uh, yes, Chairperson, we have prepared presentations as you have outlined, um, but I wish to upfront Chairperson uh, declare that uh, it is correct that uh, the BRRR report is not part of the package uh, that has been circulated. There has been some technical uh, difficulties that are internal that we are trying to resolve uh, as we grapple to bring together all of this information. But uh, we should be submitting to the committee. My sincere apologies that that report uh, is not part of our presentations today. But we do have the presentations for quarter three and quarter four and the financial performance uh, 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 presentation. Mr. Ndani Sadiki will lead us on the two quarterly reports and Ms. Uh, Violet Machiza is going to present the financial performance report. Thank you so much, Chair. Thank you. Uh, thank you and good afternoon to Chairperson and members of the Portfolio Committee, my Minister and the DG and colleagues afternoon. I'll be presenting the third and fourth quarter report. However, due to time limitation, I would ask for permission to present using the fourth quarter report because it is both quarter three and quarter four, if the chairperson so permits. No, please go ahead, uh, Ms. Adike. Thank you. Uh, the controller, can you put it on a slide? Motion, please. Thank you. Uh, can you put it on a slideshow, please? Okay. Um, on the outline of the uh, presentation, we've got the performance scorecard followed by the uh, program performance, a uh, per program, and the performance barometer at the end. I will try to run with a uh, number two so that we are able to reach the barometer at the end. Um, you can pass, I think, uh, here. The performance is between 0 and 99 percent. We regard it as non-performance. So anything that is below 100 percent is non-performance. It means the targets has not been achieved and anything at 100 percent we have achieved. Uh, on the performance scorecard, which is the summary, the department performed at 30 percent. You will see even the third quarter we were sitting at 30 percent. And that is mostly due to the fact that anything that is less than 90, 100% is uh, the non-achievement of targets. You will see that uh, we've got zero performance at administration, which is the 30 days payments of invoices within 30 days, and followed by the rural development at 0% and land reform at 25%. 30% is the overall, with restitution having achieved 100% on quarter four and 50% on quarter three. Uh, I think you will see where there are zeros. You will see that at some we are sitting at 95%, but because it's not 100%, it's put, it's put as though it's zero. Um, overall, we, we had 23 targets. We have achieved 16 of those. Um, this is just the overall performance from quarter one to quarter um, four. You will see we started at uh, 55% and mostly is the rollover of the projects that could not be finalized at, as at end of 31 March that 
tend to spill to the first quarter, and the first quarter seems to have ever performed to the performance of the department throughout uh, the second, third, and fourth quarter. Uh, next. This is again just an indication of how we have fed throughout uh, the year. Uh, you can see that we have plated uh, in quarter four, meaning that we have remained in difference. There was not much movement between quarter uh, three and four. Yeah, who's that? Mr. DK, please proceed. Okay, thank you. Um, we have achieved half of our targets on the third quarter in a row, but uh, the negative impact uh, will be fed throughout the annual targets. And next. This is just the trend analysis uh, in a graphic format for the, fourth, uh, the, the four quarters, and you can see that uh, program five has regressed. Uh, whereas program four, which is restitution, has improved from 50% to 100%. You've got uh, we've got finance that only uh, tried to reach 50% uh, during the second quarter, with third and fourth sitting at an overall performance of about 95%, therefore zero. And uh, program two, which have tried to improve but could not reach the performance of uh, quarter one and quarter two. Uh, program three is same as program one. You can see quarter one we performed, quarter two we regressed, and the third and fourth is sitting at zero. Next. This is uh, the past five years, the performance of the department in the past five years. And you can see that uh, for program two and four, we have seen an improvement compared to prior years. Three and five, they have regressed while uh, program one has not improved at all. They have remained at zero percent for the last three years. Next. And this is the summary per program. I will try and run as fast as I can because I want us to be able to get to the final uh, summary before the chair stops me. Uh, finance is sitting, which is the 30 pay uh, payments of invoices within 30 days. Achieved 95%, hence you are seeing zero. And the biggest problem there is the ALA, uh, the agricultural land holding account with invoices that are taking too long to be paid. They were sitting at 51%, followed by the restitution and uh, the Pumalanga and KZN, um, with national office sitting at 89%. However, we do have pockets of success like the SG office deeds. Uh, free state and in Mpopo that were sitting at 100%. Next. On program two, uh, we have seen the improvement, as I said, during the summary. But uh, with the draft land use master plan that was achieved. Next. Uh, the development of a national special development framework, the implementation of the strategy, it has been achieved. Um, percentage of deeds made available within seven days uh, we did not achieve was sitting at 91 percent and there were quite a f uh, number of issues that made us uh, to perform uh, so bad there were lockdown issues that came uh, during march and there was load shedding issues that uh, i think the last half of the year we had that uh, going on for some time and that had a, a negative impact. So we, in order to um, reverse the, the negative performance over time, was scheduled to be worked, but unfortunately then we closed before the final, uh, the, the last few, uh, the last week of the year we, we had closed due to lockdown. Next. Uh, the deeds transformation policy approved, it was not achieved. Uh, the process was put on hold because of many other things which you will uh, be briefed on when we do the legislation. Next. Uh, number of maps uh, that were supposed to be produced is 56. 
uh, we achieved 56. The target was 45. Next. Um, average number of working days taken to process registrable diagrams. We had said 14, we achieved 18 days. And uh, the biggest problem was the uh, the surveyors were high number of well, the surveyors submitted the unacceptable work that was submitted by surveyors had an impact, a negative impact. So we will be having ongoing engagement with the professional land surveyors to improve the quality of work submitted going forward, including the filling of the vacant posts because they have a negative impact of on our ability to achieve the targets. Next. Number of state land parcels surveyed, we had targeted Limpopo 1,500, we achieved zero, and that was because the DPWI, a Department of Public Works of and Infrastructure, we were given funding by the National uh, Treasury to proceed with this work. And therefore, uh, there is no intervention required here for us, except that we just need to collaborate and coordinate the work with the National Treasury. Next. Uh, program three, we had 122 infrastructure projects that we were supposed to finish. We only finished 30. Um, and the biggest problem was a... Uh, Previous quarters, we had overachievements, but in this quarter, we did not achieve. Uh, we are aligning quarterly targets based on previous achievements. Um, 277 enterprises were to be supported. Uh, the fourth quarter target was 22. We achieved 14. And uh, there is a comprehensive explanation per province why we did not achieve. I will not go through that. Next. 27 functional FPSU. We had a target of 15 in the fourth quarter. We achieved only one. And again, we have explanation per province, which is quite detailed. Next. Two minutes remaining. Perhaps we can quickly run to slide number 44. Yeah, on the performance barometer, uh, this is just a summary for all the quarters uh, that also compares to how we have fared compared to the annual target. So on the num go back, one slide back, go forward, yes, uh, you have jumped again, it must start with the invoices, yes, on the invoices, the target was 100%, we have achieved 95%, unqualified audit report, it was met, we got an unqualified audit report, land use master plan, uh, the draft is there, it was achieved, National Development Framework Strategy developed. It was achieved. Next page. Uh, on the percentage of deeds made available within seven days, we achieved 95%. I've explained the reasons. The deeds transformation policy uh, approved. It was 100% missed. A uh, number of maps um, of national map series produced, we had uh, uh, targeted 200, we have overachieved 222. Number of working days to process registrable diagrams, uh, they were supposed to be 14, we missed by one day, we're sitting at 15. Number of state land passes surveyed, 1,500 is the ones that have been moved to the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure. Next page. A number of infrastructure projects completed. Uh, the target was 122. We achieved 127. 
uh, rural enterprises supported the target was 227 we achieved 175 which is sitting at 77 percent uh, farmer production uh, support units that were to be made functional were achieved only three, sitting at 11%. Skills development opportunities provided in rural development initiatives, uh, we missed it, we are at 93%, having achieved 6,921 against 7,465. Number of job opportunities created in rural development, we are at 92% sitting at 5,438 versus 5,909 target. And the number of land claims finalized, uh, we missed it again. We are at 94% um, compared to 637, we achieved 603. Number of land claims settled, we've got 435, which is an overachievement compared to a target of 428. Hectares acquired 94,000 were supposed to be acquired. We achieved 92,000, which is 99%. Hectares allocated to smallholder farmers we overachieved. It's 186%. Uh, next page. Uh, smallholder farmer beneficiaries allocated land. We missed it. We are at 87% versus the target of 89 we achieved 77 number of farmers supported through the lds program we supported 52 instead of 162 uh, one household one hectare we supported 53 versus 2656 which is two percent and the number of communal pro uh, property associations supported to be compliant with the legislation We've overachieved sitting at 107%. Number of labor tenants applications, we have missed it. We only managed to achieve 498 uh, against the target of 3,666 or 14%. Number of actors allocated to farm dwellers and labor tenants, we have overachieved. We're sitting at 109%, which is achievement of 9,500 versus 8,750. Next. I think we have come to the end and overall performance is at 30% if we do not take into account the 90%, uh, 95%, 99% that we have seen throughout the presentation. Thank you. The call of honor. The Did Chair, perhaps, uh, I don't know if the chair would like us to present the financial performance information and then... Yes, please uh, uh, go through that so we may uh, have honourable members go into the two presentations. Okay, all right, Chair. Hello, yes. Mr. Mandela. Yes, Chair. Honorable Mundi. Hello? Honorable Mundi. Can I continue, Chair? Yes, what is it? Yeah, Chair, can, when we receive the next presentation, can the person moving the slide be on par with the presenter? Because it was difficult to follow on the previous presentation. Okay, noted. Proceed, DG. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Uh, Ms. Uh, Violet Machiza is going to present the financial performance. Yes, if we can be brief on that, just straight to the point, so we can uh, enable honorable members enough time for questions. Good afternoon, Chairperson, members of Portfolio Committee, Minister and DG. Uh, for the sake of time, I'm going to request that uh, we must start at the slide number four, where it's written programs stroke branches, so that I can take slide number four, where it's written programs and branches. The next slide. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, 
In terms of the allocation that we have, uh, Chairperson, we were having 10.8 billion. During quarter three, expenditure was sitting at 68.6%, while in terms of administration, which is program one, we were sitting at 63.8%, we spent 1.1 billion. While in terms of program two, we spent 489 from the budget allocation of 703. Program three was spent one billion uh, from 1.7 billion. Restitution was spent 2.7 billion from the allocation of 3.5 billion. And overall, we we're sitting at 68.6 percent. I'm going to request that we move to the slide return economy classification, which is slide number six. The next slide. Yeah, we are on slide oh, number six. Chair? Continue, uh, Mayor On my screen, uh, I'm on, on slide. Let me chair the meeting, thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. With this slide, it shows us the allocation and expenditure per economic classification. We have spent 1.8 billion from the allocation of 2.4 billion on compensation of employees which was 75.1%, while goods and service was spent 1.3 billion, which is 56.4%. Transfer and subsidies were spent 3.7 from the allocation of 5.2 billion, which is 70%. If you look in terms of the payment of capital assets, we have spent 474 uh, million from the allocation of 628. When we look in terms of goods and service, we, the, uh, the, uh, the underspending there, it was due to the allocation that is sitting within program three, which is read and read, because the allocation where we support our beneficiaries is sitting there. And again, in terms of the payment on capital assets, the underspending was due to the triple P, because we're waiting for the minister's concurrence. When the minister was um, giving, giving brief in terms of what we were waiting for the concurrence, from Treasury, it was relating to Triple P and the implementation of the uh, LDS project. So can we move to slide number eight, which is written priority projects? Thank you. In terms of this slide, it shows us the allocation for the projects that we have to implement within the department, excluding compensation of employees. In terms of REIT, uh, we have spent 417 million this is the branch where we have to implement our construction projects. Rural, REIT, rural enterprise and industrial development will spend 177 million uh, from the allocation of 366, while in terms of NARISEC, 193 uh, from the allocation of 340. You can see that in terms of restitution, we are sitting at 73.2% while the, the allocation is excluding COE. And then we can move. Uh, the next slide, Chairperson, for the sake of time, is just showing the detail um, household um, allocation per provincial office. I'm going to request that we skip slide number nine because I already spoken to uh, at the summary level. I will go to quarter four performance. And then from quarter four, let's go to slide uh, written programs and branches, which is slide number four in terms of quarter four. In terms of, um, yeah, in terms of performance now, this is a uh, expenditure at uh, the end of financial year. The department is sitting at 99.9%. While in terms of administration, we're sitting at 99.8%. Program 200%, Program 3, which is rural development, 99.7%. The other core branches have spent 100%. If I can talk to Program 1. Program 1, where you can see office accommodation and corporate service. Office accommodation, that's where we spend our allocation for our office accommodation for the whole 
country for all provinces. And we've got allocation there for the triple P. So allocation for the triple P were not able to spend in terms of the construction allocation that was sitting there. Corporate service is where that's where we pay our software licenses. We're not able to pay the software licenses that uh, commitment happened in March. We have to pay them in April after service has been rendered. So if you look in terms of program three, rural development, read and, and Narisek, especially coming to read, that's where our underspending um, was because this is where we have to implement a uh, construction work. We get invoice where service has been rendered. So if invoices are not yet submitted, uh, we are not able to spend the whole allocation. So in terms of the performance, if you can see in terms of uh, land reform, we have increased uh, uh, allocation for ALA for, 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 for 277 million uh, during the end of March for us to be able to fund uh, a, a expenditure relating to COVID and 100 million that was transferred to Land Bank. But at the end, we went back and requested the 100 million to be returned to the department and it was paid back to the department. Uh, I'm going to request that um, we must move to slide number six, which is economic classification in terms of this um, quarter four. The next slide. Can you conclude? You've got three minutes. Okay. Let me go to the allocation, the slide for Anna, uh, which is going to be closer to the next. Um, Next slide. So next slide, let's go to quarter four because quarter three also is going to be included there. Quarter four. Thank you. In terms of Allah, let's move to the where we've got allocation so that members can see how much was allocated in terms of this this year. Thank you very much. Um uh, the slide before, yes, thank you. Uh, in terms of allocation for ALA, we were sitting at 2.7 billion. Here, that's where we have to procure land and have to pay for land development support program and finalizing the recap commitment and also other operational that must happen within the, 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 the entity. End of financial year, we were sitting at 49%. And then we had commitment of 1.1 billion and was for, for end of financial year. In terms of allocation for ALA, because it's an entity, the, where we've got commitment, we have to submit request from Treasury to get retainment of the allocation of the, the previous financial year. When Treasury approves, we are able to get the funding to pay the commitment. In terms of the department, in terms of ACUAS, yes, uh, ACUAS we were having 20, 20 million for the current DRGLR, and then those commitments are relating to a, a service that were rendered during um, February, March, where suppliers uh, were not yet submitted the invoices, but we are able to pay them during current financial year. Now they are going to be paid from the new department, uh, Jalad. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you. Deji. Chairperson, thank you very much. That will be the end of the, the presentation. Thank you, uh, DG. Honorable members, uh, there is uh, the presentation um, that has been put before you. We will have 20 minutes of uh, questions and uh, uh, questions of clarity, then we will give 20 minutes to the department to respond to the issues raised by honorable members. And we start with honorable Tape. Thanks, uh, Chair. Chair, this is uh, a very disturbing picture that is being painted by the presentations. Quarter three and quarter four. 
the department achieved only 30%, which means 70% of the plan targets were not achieved, which then equates to the fact that 70% of services that could have been delivered were not delivered to the farming communities. I'm sitting here, Chair, and thinking that uh, do we, will I be right if I say COVID rescued the farmers? Because if this is the picture, it means the relief they are getting from COVID probably makes up to this uh, limitation that the department had. The minister has explained the reasons why this underperformance and everything, issues of moratorium. My particular concern is for rural development chain, program three. None of the, 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 the plant uh, targets under this program were achieved. The very same program that speaks to national development plan, that of creating viable, sustainable communities that must also contribute to food security in this poverty that we are in. The moratorium was there for infrastructure projects in the main. My question here is that has this moratorium been lifted for now? Number two, the issue that the department has always planned to be able to pay service providers invoices within 13 days is not, a, it's not happening. At least they achieve 95% and it has to be 100%. What plans are there in place? when we go to the next five years, the next strategic uh, goals that they have placed, uh, everything that they've put in place, not to put the small businesses that are doing uh, business with this department at stake. What is it that they are doing in this regard? But yeah, I'm saying uh, it is a very disturbing uh, situation. The horses have bolted, it's end of quarter four, and we have to move forward now in, in a reconfigured department. My prayer is that, Minister, like we have indicated, you've got your dads in the row to make sure that this picture does not uh, repeat itself. It cannot be correct that 30% in both quarters. I mean, when we look at quarter two, the only time they performed was quarter one, 55%. From there, it was 29, 30, 30. When everybody else was working, Dr. DLR, this former department, was on holiday. In the main. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Mashati. Hey, thanks, Chair. I, I, I would follow suit from what Honorable Tape has indicated. This is a very, very disturbing picture in as far as the department is concerned. And I must reiterate this particular position that we have said in the last quarter review when we indicated that um, the performance of that 29%, we were told that it will be recovered in quarter three and quarter four. In quarter three and quarter four, the worst happened. That means uh, even things that we were supposed to have recovered then, there was no way that we would have recovered. Uh, Chair, my questions will be on the the violence, not violence, I mean the accruals. I just want to check with the department whether did they request rollovers in as far as the commitments that were still outstanding in the last financial year. If yes, how much was the amount and has the treasury approved? Chair, our job as members of this committee is to make to do oversight on the department, not necessarily to tell them how to do things. But my concern is when it comes to issues of invoices of services that are rendered. Um, those who have worked in finance will tell you that when financial year closes on the 31st of March, even the next two weeks, Treasury always allows you to pay to make payments in as far as invoices are concerned. Now, I just want to check with the department uh, because we're going to have this particular problem of a uh, department saying to us uh, because of um, services that were rendered end of March, therefore we couldn't do one, two, three, four, five, it will be paid in the next financial year. 
couldn't they have made arrangements with service providers to make sure that those invoices are paid on time? And lastly, Chair, what has been, okay, on the accruals I'm done, the, the money that has not been spent, had it all been sent back to, to Treasury, of course, but had the, does it mean that everything that was not spent, it has gone to COVID-19, therefore they would not necessarily have AMA rollovers? Thanks, Chair. Honorable Stay. Thank you, Chairperson. Chair, yes, uh, there's nothing more that I can add regarding the uh, um, disappointment that I'm feeling in this department, Chairperson. Um, I, I, I want to firstly start by asking the DG or the Minister or anyone if they feel proud um, of the work that this department has achieved um, in the last quarters of the, the previous financial year, Chairperson. And I want to also find out the 1.3 billion rand uh, that was spent under the Agricultural uh, Disaster COVID Fund. Exactly where did it come from? Um, if I read some of these documents, it looks to me like it was uh, money that was uh, then put under the ALA account or somewhere in there. Uh, because on slide two of the presentation, they speak about uh, transfers and subsidies into that account uh, and also towards land bank. So I think, Chairperson, we need to get a full picture of the funds that were not spent, the rollovers, the, the, the money that was um, not uh, given to certain projects. Um, I, I don't think, Chairperson, it's, it's fair. Um, to now say that certain things were not happening during the last third and fourth quarters of last year. Um, I, I'll tell you honestly, Che, I feel like that money was just dumped somewhere. It was spent under a disaster fund and we, we don't have oversight over that, Chairperson. And the letter that I sent you, unfortunately, I haven't received it yet, was to request that we get full details of that 1.3 billion rand spent and not like we were promised last time with AgriParks that we will get full details of AgriPark funding and then we never get it checked. I am really at the point of taking this department to uh, um, Scopa to get full details of the financial of, of, of what's going on here because we are getting very, very um, flimsy reports. So, Jefferson, I would request that we get all of that information that we, we asked uh, all the time. I'm also disappointed, Chair, that we constantly get um, calls from desperate farmers out there trying to finalize land reform projects, trying to do things on the land, but they can't even get hold of the officials, never mind getting responses from them. And that doesn't need, need money. Chairperson, we have been working full steam during this COVID period from homes, from a phone, from a laptop. What stops the department from working full time? Um, Chair, I, I, I don't have other words. I just think that we need to start acting as a committee and get the information that we constantly ask and we never get. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Honorable Matthias. Ndate Matthias. Chapsen. Hello, Chapsen. Yes, go ahead, Ndate Matthias. Uh, look, it was a. Uh, What's the tomb chair who says that not everything that shines is gold, not everything that shines is diamond. The report presented here paints a picture of 
as, as if the, everything that the department has done so far uh, is gold. Can you hear me, Jen? Yes. You are audible. Whereas the opposite is true. And that being the case, I agree with uh, fellow colleagues and members that uh, uh, this report leaves much to be desired. And that being the case, what kind of uh, report is this that should, uh, the committee should approve? I would, well, I, I, I submit that uh, the work of this department must, we need to move or take what is called paradigm shift and move away from looking at its work in terms of the program areas. Because working on a basis and evaluating the work of the department on the basis of that is misleading and does not give a true picture of the work of the department. This department's work must be evaluated on the basis of the socio-economic impact in changing the lives of our people out there, in changing for the better the quality of life of our people. And if we have to do that, there would be much to be desired from this department. It, it's very sad. This, this department's work must be looked from about five perspectives, Chairperson. The first perspective is the agricultural development and infrastructure in the rural side. What amount of work and the quality of such work can be shown, can be presented before us as having impacted on the agricultural development and impacting on, on the rural infrastructure? That's the first point. The second perspective is the economic growth of the rural side, the countryside. Is there any growth if we have to go to the eastern rural Eastern Cape in the eastern Pondo land? Is there any any quality work that you can point that the department has done in improving the economic growth of our people there? Thirdly, which is the third perspective, is to look at urban and rural integration because this, this department calls itself Department of, of Agriculture land reform and rural development. To what extent have we kept the migration of our people from the rural Eastern Cape, rural Limpopo, rural Northern Cape, from the urban centers of Johannesburg, Durban, Cape Town, and so forth? That can only be achieved if this department uh, is hard at work, officials do their work, for which is not the case currently. The rural urban, okay continue to undermine the gains of democratic uh, dispensation. Lastly, is the area of agri-processing and industrialization. It's said that this department did not point anything towards that direction, Honorable Chair, with due respect, and I really want to beg your indulgence. That is only if we speak that officials will start to take their work serious. We don't have to be, to be tip-top around poor performance by officials, which is disappointing and reflects on us as public representatives. Can we please be hard on these officials so that they start to take their work serious and take us serious? Thank you so much, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Matthias. Honorable Trete. Mamo Trete. Um, yes, Chair. Um, thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Chair. Um, Chairperson, I, I it, it's as if Chair. Actually, I will follow suit of my colleagues, Chair. Um, that indeed the report is unacceptable. Um, from the department, especially Chair, I'm recalling and when they were presenting to the committee presenting the second quarter of their budget. Um, they, 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 they uh, the department actually indicated that this first and second quarter is a bit challenging, then they'll improve on the third and fourth quarter. 
if I recall correctly. Now the third and fourth quarter is even worse. 30% spent. I'm wondering, Chair, if the department cannot spend on program three, four, five, which in my understanding is there is the departmental core, core, core uh, 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 business. Then where does that leave the actual farmers? and other issues that the department has to, 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 to attend to. It's, it's a really disappointing, Chair. It's a really disappointing. 30% is not enough. I'm, 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 I'm reminded of what Honorable Maso would, 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 would continuously emphasize in this committee of a consequence management. I, th I think, Chair, it's about time that we really start to see some of those consequences, consequence management being implemented. Um, 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 for now, Chair, can I, can I pass? And uh, can you. I reserve my comments? Thank you. Uh, Honorable Kappa. Tembom code. Honorable Kappa. Honorable Kappa. Okay, Honorable uh, Mepriet. Thank you, Chairperson. May, <clears throat> sorry, maybe just to add to what my colleagues have said, I am really worried about the underspending of the department. Um, I also recall that that we were promised that the third and the fourth quarter will look better. And I am hoping that the third and the fourth quarter look the way they do um, because of the merging of departments and, um, and, and all of that. I really do. But Chairperson, I would like to see as well um, what are we doing with that funding and is the underspending the reason that we are performing so poorly in terms of our programs and in terms of our outputs? Um, that is that is really frustrating and, and worrying to me and specifically the way uh, the department is is answering the questions and um, to add to some of my colleagues um, in Afrikaans we have a very nice word, word that says and 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 I really do feel that the department, to a large extent, is is being um, is is misleading us, or not necessarily misleading us, but they are giving us all kinds of other information, even though they know what we want. And but I would just like to focus my questions on an FPSU's chairperson. Um, the target was 27 FPSUs, I think, if I remember correctly, for the third quarter, and then 15 for or the annual target was 27. And the presenter spoke to only three that are actu that are actually active. Um, I would like to know where are they, um, the three that are active in terms of the, the 27. Um, if memory serves correctly, we have received the list of the 27 that we are focusing on. But what um, can the department brief us on why only those three are active and successful? Why are they only working? What was done extra in terms of those three to get them active and working? And then how do we measure and monitor the success um, of these FPSUs? Because my, my worry is, Chairperson, we've been speaking a lot about agri-parks and we've been speaking a lot about FPSUs and, and we're continually backtracking. This is our plan at, oh no, it's unrealistic. We're not going to get to this. And my, my problem is we've seen, you know, our rural communities suffering, our rural agriculture suffering specifically um, in terms of a lot of things, not having market access, not having the proper support. And I do feel that 
that the department is lagging in terms of FPSUs and that if they they prioritize that, we would actually see assistance um, going to our, our, our rural communities. So I would like the department to to just give us give us those details. And I think my colleagues have have covered to a large large extent my dissatisfaction with the department as well. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, my Brett. Honorable Tabe Kulu. Honorable Linkos Tabe Kulu. Honorable Marshall. Honorable Marshall. Honorable Montweg. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, Chair, the, there was an issue on the moratorium by the Minister on a uh, feeling of vacancies uh, that has actually contributed to uh, a serious amount that was actually not spent on the administration. I want to check how far, what is the status with regard to lifting of that moratorium since now that the minister normally say the NMOC process has actually concluded. What is the status with, with regard uh, to that chair? Now, another issue chair that actually I battled, uh, I wanted to tell you that I battled to follow on the two presentations because the person who was moving the slide uh, was actually not even anywhere closer to the person that was making the presentation. And it made it very difficult for one to actually follow. I want to speak on the issue of, uh, there was overspending on the restitution and land reform program, which has actually contributed to 4.9% or 344 million of over expenditure by the department. Now, with that, Chair, the department then received an approval from the land from the from national treasury for the department to assist uh, to, 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 to shift about 400 million from the admin to alha and to the land bank i want to check with the minister why when there are financial problems at the land bank the department has to intervene whereas the land bank continues to report to national treasury why is national treasury unable to intervene when the land bank has got problems because we are sitting with the small scale farmers we are sitting with farmers that need assistance of the department the department is unable to do that but it can take money to land bank through the instruction of the national treasury uh, even though land bank reports to national treasury why can't national treasury intervene when the land bank needs financial rescue or any other resources chair now your department uh, minister does transfers to uh, whether your land bank or uh, any other your provinces now when you say you have spent so much i want to check have you included actual expenditure on the transfers that you have made in particular to the land bank I'm asking this because uh, you just said there's one there's about 1.3 billion for the stimulus package that is sitting with the land bank uh, uh, not, 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 not with the land bank that is sitting with commodity organizations so that they must assist uh, both livestock and crop farmers and I can tell you from where I'm city minister even though the Minister of Finance signed on the 30th of December 2019 you have not moved with the actual implementation. Do you take money, dump it with community organizations, and you come back to your organizations and you report that there was expenditure? Because there's no expenditure. Some of the farmers that should have received that money have not received the money because of problems that they find themselves with a commodity organization. 
Uh, the other thing is on the 150 on the COVID-19 applications. Okay, now I want to check. Chair. Let me conclude by saying, is there a link between the non-financial report and the financial report? I don't see a link because the non-financial report for quarter three and quarter three, quarter three and four says that the performance was about 30%. And yet on the financial report, you have overspent with an amount of 344 million or 4.9%. I just want to say, is there a link between those two presentations that you've just did? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, honorable members. Uh, let me also share the same sentiments with uh, the rest of uh, my colleagues, uh, Honorable uh, Minister. But I would want to talk directly to the presentation that has been put uh, to us. In terms of uh, the number of rural enterprises that have been uh, um, supported, you've only managed to underscore 71 percent what has been the reason that uh, you have not been able to uh, give full support to 100 percent of these rural enterprises because the department's core mandate is to uplift rural communities so uh, what has led uh, to the department not being able to uh, fulfill that but also, if you look at the number of farmer production support units, you are sitting at 4%, uh, of which uh, uh, in terms of ensuring we are able to meet uh, food security uh, uh, for our people. How are we then uh, not able to ensure that these FPSUs are fully functional and are supported and are realized? and uh, you are sitting at a mere uh, 4%. But uh, even with those that uh, have been achieved, uh, if it is uh, uh, 12 out of 27, if I'm reading it correctly, where are the ones that have been achieved located? Because we would like as a, a portfolio committee to uh, do oversight on this FPSU, so it will be good for you to highlight exactly where they are located. And if I may uh, move down to uh, the issue of uh, land claims finalized and land claims settled. Land is a very crucial issue to our people uh, today. We have been uh, undergoing a process of the amendment of Section 25 and as the adult committee uh, been able to participate in that, we have had our people uh, call for land hunger, ensuring that they want to see land transferred to our people now. Some have actually spoken to a date of the 10th of April, which shows just how important this issue of land needs to be attended. So, so what has uh, given uh, rise to that you are only able to achieve 62% of land claims finalized and then land claims settled 74%. If you can uh, be able to uh, uh, address that because our people want to see a rapid transformation of land uh, to its rightful owners. And uh, we are not seeing that uh, being attended to with uh, speed. And if I uh, move on uh, to uh, the number of farms supported through the Land Development Support Program, we've only been able to uh, achieve 31%. And this is one of the core mandates of the department. What are the reasons? Uh, uh, that have given a, a rise to that and uh, led to such uh, poor uh, 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 achievements. But I think uh, this one pays me most, Honorable Minister, because I'm from the rural community and I'm uh, 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 coming out of a, a, a village 
located in the banks of Mpasha River, where our people in rural communities have their homes and their household gardens. And then to find that in the number of households supported under the one household, one hectare uh, 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 program, you have only achieved a mere one percent. That is a shocking uh, 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 number uh, uh, to even say. Our people need such support. Our people in rural areas in particular look to government for support. And when this support is not forthcoming and when monies are not utilized for the real core purpose of what could alleviate poverty, particularly in rural areas, because with these household gardens, our families and our communities are able to feed themselves through this one household, uh, 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 one uh, hectare uh, program. They are able to feed themselves. How can then such a department be able to only achieve 1% in it? But also, if you look at uh, the number of labor tenants applications settled, you are sitting at 12%. This really goes to show the poor performance uh, of the department, and this is totally not satisfactory. I would appreciate if uh, you can be able to speak to these figures as to what actually led to the department uh, achieving such low figures in terms of giving support to rural communities and rural programs. I thank you. Honorable Minister, Honorable DG. I would ask the team uh, to start first, Trepesin, and then I will end. Okay, Honorable Minister. Officials of the department. Chairperson, thank you. Um, minutes. Chairperson, let me start at the end. There are specific answers that the chairperson requires uh, in response to very specific questions. Let us offer to provide those answers in writing to the chairperson. The second one, chairperson, the second one, chairperson is that. Uh, Evidently, the, the committee is, is unhappy with the performance uh, as reflected in the report in terms of how performance rating uh, is done uh, in terms of the rating model that uh, national government departments follow in terms of the standard set by the Department of Performance Monitoring. Uh, and it comes to, it brings to the question that uh, Honorable Ntwedi asked, what is the relationship between uh, the performance information and budget expenditure? Obviously, there is not going to be a relationship between performance versus budget expenditure. If your performance rating, if you achieve 99% of your targets, and uh, that counts for nothing, that counts for zero in terms of for performance measurement. 99% of your performance will cost you quite a lot of money to implement. But if you get measured that anything below 99% accounts for zero, there is not going to be a relationship. Hence, the department achieved 30% of the total targets. If the members looked uh, in some of the targets that we achieved, we got even up to 90%, uh, up to 95% of some of the targets. Some of the targets, we missed them by one. But because they are not 100%, they are accounted for in terms of the measurement rating as, as, as zero. So, so we are going to continuously have this challenge uh, because when we fall short of one or two of 10 percentage below 100 percent, the rating is going to rate us as zero. Let me hasten to say, Chairperson, there are areas where we could have done much more better 
and we are not going to try and explain ourselves we can only commit to do much better in those areas where we have failed like in the area of the fps use uh, the, the numbers that are, are, are the number of fps use that are functional uh, we can only improve on the restitution process we can only improve on the number of labor tenant claims that we settle we can only improve in the program of rural development for rural enterprises because those are the issues that affect people in, in, in that are most needy of the services of the department. We can only plead for that. Then there are specific questions, Chairperson, that relate to the, the finances, and I'm going to ask uh, both uh, uh, DDG uh, Rendani and uh, CD who, who Violet to, to, to deal with those. But I, I just want to deal with the last one, the issue of the 1.3 billion. Chairperson, uh, 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 it has come up from Honorable Stain, uh, Honorable uh, Mutuidi, where exactly this has come from. With respect, Chairperson, we will respond to this question Although we have responded to it in writing, when we were asked about it, uh, we have answered it uh, several times. The minister has responded to it. We will respond to it again. We did say that uh, the program of land development support, which was going to be funding the stimulus package, got delayed in terms of implementation until we received the approval, which meant that there was this surplus of 1.3 billion rent, which was then reprioritized with the request of National Treasury. Now, to Honorable Muntwedi, there are 146 farmers uh, who are benefiting from from 400 million rand of that 1.3 billion, 146 farmers, the, the extent of the land that is being supported there is 216,000 hectares in all nine provinces. We can also provide the breakdown in per province in terms of where that money is going. With regard to the land bank, we have not transferred uh, monies to the land bank to offset uh, the shortfalls at the land bank. The monies that we have transferred to the land bank, we have transferred them on the basis of agreements as both departments. But as we have said, where we had challenges with the land bank, the monies have reverted back to the department and we will continue to implement that. Uh, That, that deals uh, in part with the with the with the with the hundred one point three billion rand. Uh, Honourable Stein, I'm I'm not quite quite too sure which is this information that Honourable Stein has repeatedly requested, which we have not provided. Uh, I would really appreciate it if we can be provided again perhaps for the last time, Honorable Stain, so that we know exactly what is this information that has not been provided, so that we can do our utmost best to respond. Honorable, Honorable Briet, uh, the, the, the functional agri-parks, uh, FPSUs, I think about four meetings ago, we were asked this question, we provided that information, but we will provide it again. And we did say that one of the functional FPS used is in the free state. Uh, we, would, we can uh, provide that information. I will ask uh, DDG Rendani on the measures that we have put in place on the on the payment of 100% uh, uh, for uh, within 30 days of all invoices. Uh, uh, Violet on the on the rollovers if there were any rollovers. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you. I see the hand uh, of uh, uh, Land Claims Commissioner, uh, Umam Koboto. Uh, if you can also uh, note a DG. Proceed. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Thank you, Chair. 
um thank you um dg uh, chairperson i would attempt to answer those that relate to finance uh, there was a question on the issue of treasury allowing payments after year and for a few weeks um, that um, would apply where we're using the accrual basis the department uses modified cash standards so 31 march anything that is not paid goes into accrual there is no allowance to be able to pay after um the year end uh, on whether we have asked for all of us the treasury regulations indicates which items you can ask for rollover on and those would be the capital expenditure for which the project is still running so here we did not ask for rollover because most of the money that was left was for operational expenditure and therefore we couldn't ask but however all that money that was not spent we then ask for treasury to retain that money to use it for COVID-19 for which the approval was granted and it's part of the 1.2 billion that has been used for COVID-19 uh, issues. Uh, there was no money that was sent back to treasury. We used all the money. Um, on the issue of uh, the 30 days, we have regressed this year compared to other years. However, we ended at 95%. And the biggest problem was sitting with Allah, which the Honorable Minister indicated when she started, because that's where we're sitting at 52%. Those issues have been sorted in Allah. I am certain that in the new year, they would perform much better because the problems that were there have been resolved. But over and above that, we've got the uh, invoice tracking system, a system that has been implemented. We have realized that uh, we did not conduct change management training for people to now get used to using the system because it does fast track the approval and the payment of invoices. So we have instructed the team finance to ensure that every senior manager should go through that training of change management and to now change their mindset regarding using system to enhance uh, service delivery. We were hoping uh, it was supposed to start beginning of the financial year and because we were not working during the family at the beginning and we are still not allowed to gather we have asked uh, the team to assist us if we can't be running this training over the systems to try and improve the way we, we do i think those were the questions that the accounting officer did not uh, deal with the rest of those that are in, uh, impacting on finance he had answered thanks chair you've acknowledged the chief land claims commissioner yes Mankowoto, please go ahead thank you honorable chair honorable members minister dj and colleagues I just wanted to respond to the query that you raised, Chair, around the performance of the Commission. Uh, I hope I'm audible. Yeah, can you repeat that? You are cutting. Okay. Uh, yeah, go ahead. I, I, was saying, I was saying I wanted to respond to the issue that the Chair raised around the performance of the Commission. And to specifically say, Chair, that um, I wanted to state on record that perhaps uh, you read the figures incorrectly. 
because in terms of our report, the 76% um, that you made reference to was, and the 74% and the 62% was the uh, overall performance of the commission as it related to quarter three at that point in time. However, if we looked at the performance of quarter three of the commission, we, we performed for 141% for settlement and 96% for finalized. And then in terms of quarter four, again, we overachieved by 126% and 190% for quarter four. And then the overall achievement, if you look at the end of the year, we, are, we achieved all our targets, 102% for settled and 108% for finalized, which means that we were able to recover in quarter three and four and overall uh, perform 100% uh, um, in terms of the, the train future. Well, thank you, uh, Mamu Koboto. I was reading on a particular slide and uh, I'm happy that you corrected the figures because that's the figure that I was lifting up for a slide, so I might have read it wrong. Thank you for outlining that. Uh, Chairperson, I'm not sure that I can come in. Yes, go ahead, uh, Mamuti Des. And thank you very much, Chair. And thanks to the members for the issues that they've raised as well as their observation. There was a pointed question asked by uh, Honorable Stain, can myself or the DG or anybody else actually say that you are happy uh, about the performance? Surely, I don't think anybody will be happy when the performance is not what is expected, particularly in terms of goal set and not being achieved as one would have liked. So that is why the DG in his response was saying, we will seek to continuously improve where we are found wanting. Chairperson, there's an issue that was raised uh, by Honorable Muntwendi in respect in res uh, in respect of the moratorium. I just want to indicate that with respect to the moratorium on administration, it wasn't a decision of the minister. It was actually the decision of the DPSA in terms of those departments that were merging. However, we were allowed to fill those critical posts. And the reasons for that was to make sure that we do not bloat the system when we're actually going through a reconfiguration. That is why if you look at our reconfiguration, as I indicated earlier, we've been able to accommodate all the staff. Secondly, Chairperson, in the areas where appointments were not made, were those areas where there's the duplication of functions between the old Dr. DLR and the old DAF. So I just wanted to explain that. Secondly, even within that, as indicated, we still did allow for the filling of critical posts on other um, line-related function of the department. Chairperson, on the issue of one hectare, one household, indeed I agree with you that we can actually make better on that program to ensure that as much as it's possible, we actually address those communities and those households to ensure that they deal with issues of food insecurity. Chairperson, with regards to the labor tenants, I just want to remind members that there was a judgment that actually changed the dynamic in terms of what we would do as a department. So part of the work that we had to do was to appoint the master as well as the critical staff that the master needed. And the court actually had asked the master to present a plan to court on how the labor tenants um, matters in terms of the land acquisition and transfer will be handled. And I'm sure we did report to this committee 
that we're not pleased about that because actually on that program we are kind of like in administration. So what we had put as a target, after that court judgment, we couldn't proceed because we had to make sure that we comply with the court order and the master, Dr. Lavin, was, I mean, Professor Lavin was then appointed and he had to do the consultation with the department, our provinces, as well as the relevant non-government organizations that work with the labor tenants that took us to court. So I just want to indicate why there is an underspending, particularly on that program. The master will now be working with us on the implementation plan that would have been agreed to by the Land Claims Court, Chairperson. I hope that does um, deal with the issues that have been raised. The other issue raised by Honorable Mtwedi in respect of the land bank, the DG has explained partly. We have not put money in the land bank to deal with their liquidity issues, even to deal with the status of the land bank in terms of the downgrade. When we agreed on the COVID intervention and locating that money in the bank, it was an agreement with Treasury. But indeed, Treasury and the land bank have come back to us to say, let's take the 100 million because the status of the bank as it stands is not going to be able to accommodate that amount. So the money has not been spent by the land bank. However, what we have agreed is that the land bank is going to go back to those farmers in distress, assess them in terms of their criteria, and then indicate to us as the department those farmers that are successful, and then they will be paid from that resource. I thought I needed to clarify that because that money has not been spent by the land bank, nor has it been made to shoulder the bank in the problems that it is um, experiencing. Chairperson, I want to again come back to the matter of the FPSUs and agri-parks which we dealt with when we started in this sixth administration. That indeed commitments for this program was made. We agreed the program will continue. But we also agreed that there were certain things that were not done in a manner that would allow us to achieve the desired impact. Part of the delay, unfortunately, it's about dealing with those issues. Issues that you yourself, Chairperson, and the members actually highlighted to us from the beginning, where you yourselves in your oversight that you did pointed to us that in certain areas it was just a fence. There was no activity that was happening. So I just want to indicate that yes, we might be slower in the way in which we are doing that correction, but it is in the interest of trying to address the issues that you yourselves as the committee have raised with us. So I just thought it's important for me to respond to some of those issues that Chairperson, you yourself, has raised. And in respect of the information which uh, Honorable Stain have indicated that has not come forth, that has been requested to the... Honorable Minister. Thank you very much, Chairperson. We will follow on those uh, issues of responses that members are raising concerns that we have not responded to. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Mamou Tideza and uh, the uh, DG and officials of the department uh, for the presentation and also for giving uh, uh, answers uh, to the questions of clarity posed by the honorable members. We would like to request that uh, you uh, send uh, the answers uh, to the questions uh, back to the committee in writing so that we can be able to have it for our records no later than uh, next week, Wednesday, close of business day. 
Uh, let us proceed then, uh, honorable members, uh, with the presentation uh, by the uh, Ingonyama Transport. I will now uh, take the opportunity to hand over to the chairperson of Ingonyama uh, Transport, Uchaj Nguyen. Thank you, chairperson. And good afternoon to all honorable members, the minister, and all official presence. The chairperson has already noted the delegation from ITB, which includes three Yamakos, Nkosu Kumete, Nkosu Bele, and Nkosu Mavondla. Uh, Mr. Shabalala has just walked out. And the acting CEO, Mr. Cabela. Uh, Chairperson, our presentation will be done by the acting CEO, Mr. Cabela, and we will fill in where necessary. We have noted the time constraint, and without further ado, Chairperson, I respectfully request Mr. Cabela to proceed with the presentation with your permission. Thank you, uh, Judge Nguyenya. Bao uh, Cabela, you may proceed. Uh, th thank you, Chairperson. Greetings, members, Minister colleagues, senior management of the department. We'll try chair, to run as quickly as we can. We are going to Sorry present... Sorry about Cabela. Can I request uh, all the honor... Can I continue, Chair? Please continue. Thanks, Chair. I was just alluding to the fact that we've got um, three different categories of our presentation. Quarter three reports, quarter four reports, and also some response to additional information which was contained in the letter we received from the portfolio committee. So in quarter three, we had a plan that we were going to do one policy. However, we did zero due to delays in consultation that were taking place internally. Hence then the policies were then shifted to a, the last quarter. Then so you notice then that the acquired assets that you receive, we captured them timely on the asset register. And also there is a IT solution that was supposed to be implemented for the quarter, but that was done in the second quarter. We also had uh, three trainings that we targeted to do, but we only managed to do two due to inadequate resources and internal failures to plan timely. What we then put as a mitigation plan was to say <clears throat> at the last quarter we'll have a proper schedule of all the trainings. Payments of undisputed invoices all was achieved. We plan to have one communication strategy at a draft level that was also achieved. Yeah? But I'm all under under the the land tenure rights approved we plan to hit 200, but we managed therefore to approve 230. And we continually then update 
our land holding register the target for the quarter was one and we achieved that one when we come to tc support we plan to provide support to at least 11 different TCs, but we were unable to do so due to lack of financial and human resources. Then the command then at the end of the third quarter was that we discontinue with this due to fine fine funds and human capital. And this then will then be reinstated in a new financial year, which is currently where we are. We plan then to, to support about 50 beneficiaries with educational support or bursaries, but we are unable to process this. But we have now since, according to the mitigation plan at the third quarter, congregated all these requests with the aim of achieving all of them at the end of the fourth quarter. I'll now check on just zoom quickly to expenditures for the third quarter relating to the board. For administration, the third quarter budget was 13 million, but we were able to spend 11 million. Furthermore, on goods and service, we had a budget of 3.6 million. We spent about 3.5 in that quarter. Then for employee compensation, we had 9.8 million, but we spent 7.8. So this is just in the economic classification of where the money for goods and service was spent on to the total amount of 3.5. Then just the IT. On the IT side then, we budgeted to spend on corporate services and financial administration, 4.7 million, but we spent only 529,000. On land and tenant management services, the budget there was 25 million, but the actual expenditure was only 3.7 million. On TC support, the budget for third quarter was 5 million, but we spent 451,000. So this is the IT goods and service expenditure chair as per what we did for the board. And this is the list then of the items which make up that 4.6 million on goods and services under the Ingonema Trust. Chair, I'm going to now move on quarter four performance. On quarter four on policies, we had two policies that you wanted to do, but we did zero. But we say that then the, we had three policies that were at the draft stage. That was the ICT, fleet management, and the credit control and debt management. These then are being discussed with the accounting authority. And if all goes well with the COVID and the lockdown, we should be able then to have them approved in the second quarter of this financial year. The, the assets that were procured were properly registered. Vacant position, we did not have any there that were filled. The IT solution, as I said earlier, it was done earlier due to the agency of having that protection. So hence here, we do not have any, but it was achieved on the second quarter. The training for quarter four was three as well, Chair, but zero was achieved. Then we say that as a reason is that uh, we had identified trainings to empower our employees, but implementation of same took longer. This was further compiled by the capacity in, cons uh, in capacity. Now we are busy implementing and unfolding various training programs, informal and formal so, to all our employees. Payment of Anticipated invoices, Jefferson, at the moment, we are indeed paying timely. We targeted to have an approved commercial strategy in the fourth quarter, 
However, we are busy with the craft that we are looking at, and we feel that that should be then approved now in the third quarter of the financial year due to a number of consultation with a number of stakeholders that's supposed to take place before we can have a proper communication strategy for the ITP. So in terms of the land rights, we targeted 200, but we approved 725. Also on the land holding register, it was updated as per the target of one. On the TC side, Chepesi, we had 12 training that we targeted for the TC supports. But then we're saying that, as we said earlier, that we do not have funds in the third quarter. This then means this is an unfunded expense that does not provide that in the budget. But then the trust from its limited resources has made money available to finalize the process to appoint a training coordinator and also facilitators who are going to support and assist the board in, in rolling out a proper training to all TCs. On the uh, educational awards or bursaries, as we said previously, that this was not achieved in the third quarter. Also, in the fourth quarter, it was not achieved because now we were busy reconciling, reconciling all the list of beneficiaries that we received. And at the time then that we were about to process those, we were then the country was under disaster and lockdown. Hence, we were unable to get some confirmation from some universities in terms of their payments, methods, and accounts. But we are then going to reactivate this currently as we open up now in the level three alert. So on expenses then for the fourth quarter, ITP administration side, we have a budget of 26 million and we spend about 10.6 million there. Uh, while on goods and services, we had 3.4 million as a budget, but we spend about 2.6 million. On employees, then the budget was about 23 million, and we spend about 8 million rand. This is the listing then that makes up those goods and services expenses in terms of the economic classification. On the IT side, Jefferson, corporate services and financial administration, the budget there was 26 million. We only spent about 2 million. On the land and tenant management services, 45 million, spent about only 1 million. TC support is indicated on the performance side. We had 5 million, but we, we spent 1 million on the other support that we provide to the TCs. Furthermore, Chair, then this is the goods and services for the trust. The budget was 66 million. We spent about 4 million. Then also there was a capital expenditure that we budgeted for of 10 million, but ended up spending about 38,000. This is the listing then that makes up the goods and services amount. Chair. Then, Chair, now I'm just going to zoom into part C, which is the last part of our presentation, which relates to some of the information that was were indicated on the letter that we received from the Portfolio Committee. There was an indication that you need to speak about service delivery performance and financial reports. We commend to say that financial reports of Ingonyama Transport are tabled before the National Parliament annually. Also, the board presents its quarterly reports to the portfolio committee. We further say that, of note, the trust nor the board does not get any funds for service delivery related issues. Further state that the community project which the trust makes contribution to are funded from the small amounts that the trust then collects. Therefore, it should be noted that the expectation for the ITP, which is the board, to facilitate any service delivery project should in the main be accompanied by the necessary funding. On the issue of providing detailed account of material benefits accruing to the people living on the IT land, 
So the benefits then to communities differ from situation to situation. And also this is dependent on availability of financial resources. At this stage then, the greatest challenge is the protection of communal land against expropriation either from municipal property rates or generally without compensation. The trustee, His Majesty, is duty bound to act on the best interest of the beneficiaries. There was also a request to provide an update on the audit improvement plan or strategy. We note that the trust of the AG's findings were around non-compliances with relevant prescripts, which then led to ITP incurring irregular expenditure. So that those loopholes then have been identified. As a result, then the board has commissioned a forensic investigation and furthermore placed executive management on special leave. Internal chairperson also have put some interim controls to assist to ensure compliance with all applicable prescripts to the ITP. The other findings chairperson on the AG reports relates mostly on legal interpretation of acts and, and that then is subject for discussion in another time. The department chair has also assisted ITP in addressing a number of these uh, findings that were identified by the Auditor General. Lastly, Chairperson, there was a request then that we need to comment on the BRRR of 2019 as issued on 16 October. So the board then is of our view that the recommendations contained in the report are legislative driven and thus they are uh, outside the realm and the competency of the board. That said, Chairperson, the board is willing and available to make necessary inputs as these processes then of legislative in nature unfolds. I thank you very much, Chair. I think I tried to, to do it in the allocated time frame. Judge Gwenya, Ukono Gwenya, Ufuno Gwanges. Thank you, Chairperson. I think we will take. Uh, who, uh, I'm not going to be adding anything for now, uh, Chairperson. All right. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairperson of uh, ITB, about Judge Gwenya as well as the acting CEO, Bao Kabela. Uh, honorable members, there's the presentation put to you by the Ngonyama Trust Board. Any questions, Honorable Tape? Thanks, uh, Chair. Chair, let me welcome the indication from the Minister earlier on during her opening remarks of the engagement that they are having with uh, Ngonyama Trust Board and the continuation thereof before the end of June. I think, Minister, that suffice on previous concerns that we have raised as a committee. And uh, that will also pave way on issues that we have always raised and contested in this portfolio, especially on the role or the intention for establishment of the Ngonyama Trust Board. Chair, my question based on that will then go to programs, the implementation thereof, and the expenditure. Quarter three expenditure share of 13.53% across all the programs. My question on this one is, what assistance has been put in place by Ngonyama Trust for funds that were not used? What is going to happen to that? 
And the concern here is that the funds were not used for the intended purpose because only 13.53% could be spent across the board. What uh, systems have they put in place or what are they uh, intending doing with the, 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 the funds that were not spent? There's also, Chair, an indication yeah, traditional community or traditional council support expenditures percent of the total goods and service budget it has declined from 49 percent in quarter two to nine percent in quarter three and 20 in quarter four if this area chair is one of the of that one that relates to material benefits of administration of ingonyama trust land could the the board explain why such a decrease in the expenditure. The last point, Chair, will be on the on the drastic decrease in the expenditure for administration. And I applaud the, the consequence management that the, the acting CEO indicates that because of loopholes, there's commissioned or for forensic investigation and managers are on leave, executive managers. Obviously, they're still on the payroll. My concern is that, is that uh, with the expenditure of 34%, there's something going on that needs to be explained. We don't want the board to collapse. What is happening? Why the 34% expenditure? And how is the ITV now running its affairs when this uh, management has been placed on leave? Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Tlape. Honorable Matlati. Thank you very much, Chair. I've got only three questions. One, when we, firstly, let me let me make this particular statement, Chair. In our first, during the Auditor General's report, we agreed in principle that whenever we deal with quarterly reports, we will also deal with issues of audit, inclusive of risk management. And I don't see the risk management process coming forth. It's only the, the remedial actions of the Auditor General that are coming through. So I would just want to make that particular request that as we deal with, with issues of, of the quarterly reports, we also look into that. Now, Chair, I just want to find out from um, the board uh, in relation to the special leave of executive. Are they as that this special leave means that they are on full salary payment if yes i want to check also what are the suspected transgressions of this particular executives and how many are they and who are they two um chair there was one slide where we are speaking about, um, I, can't, I think it was page 27, if I'm not, slide 27, if I'm not mistaken, where the presenter indicated that there were programs that were planned but were not budgeted for. This is when I want to rise with the minister that there's a serious, uh, the meeting that we, we, we I, I, I would support with the, the board is also on management of the institution because it's common cause that you can't plan for something that you have not budgeted for it's not possible on issue of traditional councils chair there was 1.7 million that was planned or that has been dispersed for workshops but there was no training what was the money used for equally on the 1.4 million for bursaries have those bursaries been dispersed? If not, why? And if if not, where was why is the 1.4 million? Chair, I I also want to support uh, the perspective that says uh, we allow the minister to deal with these particular issues because seemingly when um, especially when it comes to management of the board, I think there they are challenges with basic principles of what governance means in as far as the board is concerned and in as far as governance policies are concerned. So can we, they need 
merge issues because really we can we cannot honestly and truly go on uh, where monies are spent and there is no clarity in terms of what is actually happening. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Mafati. Honorable Stein. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, Chairperson, I also would like to thank uh, the Minister for uh, informing us that she met uh, with the Ngongyama Trust Board yesterday. Chair, uh, and I think we need to get um, constant updates or, or regular updates of, of, of what uh, is happening with that. Chairperson, because I am still uh, not sure about this discussion regarding the, the role of the trust board uh, compared to the role of the Ingonyama uh, state land and the role of the, 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 the king in all of this. It is very confusing. It is causing uh, a lot of um, problems. And I think that is the main reason why we can't uh, move forward regarding uh, the trust land, Chairperson. So I would like to find out uh, from uh, the question regarding the disciplinary process of the staff that were put on, on special leave, if we have um, some feedback on that. I am not sure if that was covered uh, uh, with the discussion with the Minister yesterday. Um, then, Chairperson, a question that I asked last time, and it, it just seems that we can't really get uh, to the bottom of that, is that 113 million rand that was uh, budgeted for land tenure management. I remember I asked that question last time, and there was a bit of a uh, mention about what land tenure management is all about. I would like to find out if the board has a policy uh, regarding uh, land tenure management. Uh, a policy regarding um, rental, selling, uh, and so forth. And and this is linked to the question that I asked last time on the um, if the, the land is surveyed or not, because it would make it quite impossible to have a, a policy regarding how do you manage that, uh, the land itself, if, if it's not surveyed, it's not uh, correctly uh, uh, registered. Chairperson, my other question is also regarding um, the court cases. And I, I'm not in KwaZulu Natal, and I don't always fo follow all the, the news regarding that. But I'm concerned, Chair, that when we ask questions, you know, a lot of the answers would be, but it's, uh, you know, they, there's a court case going on. They can't answer certain questions regarding the court case. Would it be possible for us to get maybe some kind of a list of idea of what the court cases is about? Is it internal issues uh, regarding staff? Is it external issues regarding people living on Ingonyama Trust land? Um, there was mentioned earlier about a mine uh, dispute uh, and all of that. So, Chairperson, I think it will also assist this, uh, this committee to understand what is the, the issues uh, regarding communities and, and the Ingonyama Trust uh, board um, on the land. Uh, I will stop there, Chair. There's, there's quite a lot of questions that I have, um, but I, I, I would rather stop there to see how uh, can we move. I just want to say lastly, Chairperson, I've been reading back um, on previous reports from, from the Portfolio Committee, and this is issues that's coming for a very, very long time. So I really uh, hope, Chair, that after the meeting with the minister in June, uh, to get to some kind of a understanding of the role um, and the, the, the legislation, uh, that we can solve uh, these issues, um, Chair, because I've been visiting some community members that lives on in Ingonyama Trust land, and the communities themselves is very unsure of their role. Uh, what is their right uh, on those on the land, Chair, and we're discussing land reform and land redistribution, but people living on Ingonyama Trust themselves, they are unsure of development of the land. If they develop the land, what will happen to it? Will, will, can someone just take it away? So I think, Chairperson, we really need to get to some kind of 
agreement of, of what is the role of the trust um, and the board uh, regarding that land. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, uh, Ms. Stein. Uh, Matiase, Honorable Matiase. Honorable Chair, you and I no, seem to be sitting, we are sitting in the dark, I don't know why. <laughs> Look, Honorable Chair, we wel I welcome the report, but the report, uh, just like the previous uh, presentation, lacks much to be desired. And it would be failing in our constitutional responsibilities and obligations to to say the least that this uh, report is a disappointment. Uh, year in and year out, we've been receiving reports of administrative failures in the in the Nguanyama transport. Officials been put on leave, others been suspended and all of that. And we are getting a report that in an attempt to turn around the situation at the Nguanyama transport, it recommends to institute forensic investigation. The question is, who are they going to investigate? Do you send the police to investigate themselves, or you send, or rather, do you send uh, serial offenders to investigate themselves, or you find external investigative agencies to do that? I recommend that. Uh, the department must instruct the ITP not to investigate itself, but the department must send a team of investigators, forensic investigators, to investigate the situation and report to the portfolio committee. Secondly, I recommend that uh, to avoid lots of, lots of money that is spent on bureaucracy, The Ngoyama Trust Board and, 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 and uh, its operation organs, especially the administrative organs, must, there must be some intervention that is made that they don't, they don't continue to appoint their own staff as it has been the case in the past. The Department of agriculture, rural, land reform and rural development must recommend or second officials who shall work in the, in, in, the IT, in, in the ITP, people who shall be loyal first and foremost to the Republic and to the people of this country and who shall be accountable to the Director General and report to Parliament. If the ITP is an entity of the department. I guess that with these experiences of lapses of what's supposed to happen and all of that, it has shown again and again that they are incapable of running their own affairs. The department must recommend officials that shall work there and account on regular basis. I see no at any time soon that then in Guanyama tries to overcome its problems. And these problems have been reported by the high panel by the former President Khalima Matland. That one, they don't comply with the financial reporting framework prescribed by Public Financial Management Act. They procure goods and services willy-nilly without inviting competitive beaters. They are continuous disgracers and all sorts of things. And I think there is conflict of interest both between members of the board and these functionaries, whether is it a CEO or the CFO or is whosoever working for ITB. There's a conflict of interest and I don't see ITB resolving these problems. I see it as a leaking vessel. Is a Titanic which is going to sink at any time soon because of 
of yes. course, clarities and all of that in the department. I recommend that we take away certain powers of the ITB and such powers must be placed with the department in order to save this uh, uh, linking, linking, linking vessel. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chair. Um, Chairperson, I have noted some few um, comments and questions, Chair. Um, on this presentation, the first one, Chair, um, I'm reminded that on the second quarter, AITB did not achieve not, did not achieve its um did not achieve chair um any of 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 the the targets their targets on the training of traditional council. That is the second quarter, third quarter, and now the fourth quarter. They did not achieve any. That is really uh, 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 worrying for me. I've also chair picked up a situation. In fact, I've also picked up that on the second quarter, the ATB uh, reported to the committee that their annual target on the um, tenure rights, their annual target is is 1,200. That's what the report says. But now on the third and fourth quarter of the same year, their annual target is, is 1,000 to, of, 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 of tenure rights. And out of that 1,000, they have achieved 955 in total. Both I'm adding both chair, the 230 that they achieved on the on the uh, third quarter and the 7.25 of the, of the last quarter. Um, that is 9.55. I'm, 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 I'm just wondering, Chair, can the ITP explain to us what happened to the, the initial target, which, which was 1,200 that they reported, by the way, on the second quarter? What, where did, where did it fall if it fell off, Chair? Um, and also, Chair, I, 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 again, Chair, I would like to pose this question, which was never actually even attempted to be answered on the, when they were presenting this. I'm posing it again, Chair, based on, on these um, targets of 1,200, we, I, I asked what informed the decision to plan to approve 1,200 tenure rights. And how many are these residential leaseholds? Can, can, can ITB actually perhaps send a list or a number to the committee just to inform the committee out of this 1,200 or oh, now 1,000? This is the list. This is the list of residential leaseholds, Chair. Lastly, Chairperson, on the third quarter, which is page um, thirteen, it's reported that there are legal fees of more than one hundred and twelve thousand. That amounts to one hundred and twelve thousand, and on the last quarter, the legal fees amounts to more than one thousand seven hundred million. I would like to conquer with Honorable Stay. If we are a committee that will be uh, holding the, the entity accountable for the public money, can the ITB submit a list of all these legal uh, uh, um, uh, cases that they are uh, paying for these legal fees without divulging or getting a uh, uh, without talking or can you, uh, uh, giving us more information, because lastly, chair, when you ask, yes, chair, 
we asked this when we when we asked when I asked this last lecture, who advocate when uh, said it's it's yeah. a it's well, a subject. Yeah. Judge Mwenya, sorry, sorry, chair, sorry, judge. Um, um, can we can we really get that the list, chair? Um, due to time, chair, I will stop there. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Honorable Mbata. Um, chairperson, thank you. I think um, most of the things have been covered, but uh, I just want to get the. Uh, the progress on the the issue of the uh, the people executive management that is placed uh, on special leave. It's uh, it's it's for how long and uh, um, and when will it uh, end? Because we don't want to to pay people while while uh, for a long time while at the end we are. We are wasting the government. I mean, I mean the the funds. These are government funds. Uh, I think the rest uh, have been covered by the fellow uh, members. Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Priet. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, I see. I'm also a bit in the dark here. I think the free state is getting dark very soon. Um, let me see if I can put it lighter. There you go. Chairperson, I think a lot of the colleagues have covered my questions to an extent as well. Um, I would like to thank the ITB for their audit action plan. I think um, uh, it seems as if they are really serious about getting things on track and, and performing well in, in their, their audit outcomes. So I hope to see an improvement and I hope to see um, that they actually, that all their plans come to fruition. Chairperson, just speaking in terms of consequence management and the number of staff that has been suspended, and I know we have mentioned that, um, just to get more details with regard to the suspensions, um, how many and for, for what serious um, offences, I think the right word is, um, and, and what is the time frame in this regard? How are we handling these suspensions? And what I would assume is um, um, investigations and disciplinary actions, especially taking into account COVID-19 has now sidetracked all of our plans what is rtb's plans to to actually handle that and maybe i think i might have missed it um chairperson but i am quite worried at the underspending of of itb specifically if you look on um slide 11 and um, speaking to corporate and financial administration which we see in the third quarter was only 11 percent um, of of the finances spent, um, goods and services as well, only 13.5% um, spent. Um, and if I remember correctly, that is um, a, a bit more was spent within the fourth quarter, but still it, it is below 50%. Um, if they can maybe just provide reasons why, um, why they did underspend and how will they actually going forward and going into a new financial year actually up their spending to, to properly ensure um, service delivery and, and getting their targets met perfectly. Um, thank you, Chairperson. I think that is all from my side. Thank you, my Brett. Dabezita, Nkosi, Tabekul. Chairperson. Nkosi, Tabekul. Yes, Chair. Yes, Chair. Uh, my chairperson is on the assistance of the communities with regards to uh, 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 plowing. Remember, I once raised the issue of the tractors that were uh, 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 placed in the areas of Amakosi assisting in agricultural projects. I, I'm, I'm still having that question, although uh, the judge sort of uh, repelled it, Last time that it was not part of the of the, of the report. I'm so concerned, Chairperson, looking at uh, the, the the necessity uh, for our people out there to start uh, plowing uh, in, in in some areas where plowing is taking place currently. So the concern that I have is just around that, Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you, Ndabezita. Uh, Honourable Mato. Uh, Uh, Chairperson, 
Firstly, I would like to apologize for getting late into the meeting due to connections. But my question, uh, Chairperson, will be around uh, the number of traditional council to be trained, which I think it was about 45. The number is higher than the number planned for the training programs of the year. In the training of the traditional councils, part of the 10 training programs is that is the, in, the tra- in that the training that they have planned is that traditional councils part of the, tra- the 10 training programs that they have? That is question number one. My question number two, uh, Honorable Chair, uh, is, is with regard to the three, the, the three expenditures item totaling to 2.2 million 170,522.18 cents. And this account for about 60% of the third quarter expenditure. And if you add 330,589.56 of the board as related expenses, it then brings us closer to 69.5% uh, honorable chair of the total expenditure. Is the is, is I don't think it's uh, is 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 uh, justifiable to spend close to seventy percent of your expenditure, budget on the board fees and the board related cost. Is the board looking into this higher expenditure cost? That is, is question number two. Question number three, chair. Uh, with due respect, what is the total number of land tenure rights approved? by the board is the it is 15 1525 or 1000 those are the questions that i wanted the board to clarify me on thank you chair thank you honorable marshal uh, last but not least uh, honorable montuede Montuedi. please don't forget me too chair after Montuedi. Oh, Honorable Babama, you joined us. Welcome. Thank you, Chair. Honorable Montedi. I see you, Mom Babama. Honorable Babama. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, I have joined just before the um, Dingonyama Trust did their presentation. Chair, I'd like us to take us a little bit back. E chairperson here to Unkosu Zwelveli Le Mandela on the 9th of October 2019 asked for clarity regarding the 10% fee that went to the board and the 90% that is supposed to go back to the community. He asked the trust to submit a five-year report that detailed what had been given back to the communities and traditional councils. I have not seen this report as yet. And I would like to ask um, how far this report is and when he envisages uh, us receiving the report. And I'd also like to say, Chair, that um, after Judge Nguenya has responded, uh, if he does not give us a specific date, then I think uh, it will be prudent for you to actually give him a time frame in order to uh, have that report given to us. And then also the expenditure of the Nguanyama Trust reflected in the third and fourth quarter report does not comply with the provisions of the Nguanyama Trust's financial regulations, which provide... Um, that only 10% of the trust's income may be used for administration. I would like in Wanyama Trust to clarify why they are not adhering to this. Uh, because you will find that uh, in my reading, <laughs> it is very clear from their own Ingonyama Trust financial regulations that it does stipulate there that they must use only 10% for you know day-to-day expenses, but otherwise 90% must go back to uh, to the community. I would also like to know what does the land tenure management budget comprise of. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, budget for this in the latest report shows as, as about 113.6 million. 
I would like a detailed report or a full breakdown to be provided on what this um, land tenure management budget comprises of uh, from the um, from the from the uh, Gonyama Trust. Um, okay, training of traditional councils has already been asked, so I won't go into that. I would my I think my last question would be the ITB must explain why the third and fourth quarterly reports tabled today fail to show the income of the Ingonyama Trust. Where are the details of this income? And is the ITP as the designated accounting authority of the Ingonyama Trust ensuring that the Ingonyama Trust is in compliance with the PFMA? Um, I'm just looking at my notes, Chair. And my last question is, um, how is the ITP managing the trust's obligations to the municipalities that are in, in the area of jurisdiction of the trust? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Babama. If I can just uh, sponsor uh, also uh, a few questions of clarity. Uh, in the ITP, it is my understanding, uh, Honorable Minister, that uh, you ought to be represented there. I therefore would like to understand from the ITB who represents the minister within the board of the ITB. Also, uh, it is uh, my understanding uh, that uh, in terms of uh, the traditional councils, that have been uh, given training. Can you identify which traditional councils have been given training and at what cost? And uh, in terms of uh, the support given to communities, as uh, uh, Honorable uh, Mbabama uh, alludes to a previous uh, meeting we have uh, requested, uh, on uh, the breakdown on the projects that have been supported by Ngonyama Trust. If I am uh, correct, uh, Honorable Mbabama, we had requested the ITB to present this uh, on the 12th of May, but due to the challenges uh, of uh, uh, lockdown and having to readjust to a uh, virtual meetings, we can be able to uh, check with the Secretariat as to when is the soonest date we have available to engage on these issues because we would like to ascertain if the monies uh, that have been uh, uh, levied on behalf of communities uh, have uh, been able um, have been able uh, to be utilized in those communities. I would therefore like that to be attended uh, at a, a later date uh, uh, announced uh, by the uh, Secretariat according to our uh, programs. Uh, but uh, also uh, it seems uh, that uh, we are uh, uh, seeing difficulty uh, in terms of uh, uh, getting some kind of indication on what the communities are getting of real benefit uh, uh, to them. So I would like uh, the ITB to be able to illustrate exactly uh, what uh, if uh, uh, Uncle uh, in his area would be actually benefiting uh, out of uh, the ITB. But you also speak of the bursary programs that you run uh, for youth uh, within uh, the area of Ingonyama Trust. Can you be able to finish the committee with the list? of bursaries that you have provided for the past five years 
what uh, the field of study those uh, bursary students or beneficiaries have been focusing on and how many have been able to graduate through your bursary program and having graduated what are those youth uh, located in today uh, in terms of being of assistance to the traditional communities that they come from? Uh, have they been able to uh, effectively give support to the traditional councils that you support? But then uh, on issues of governance uh, within the ITB, uh, the attendance uh, of board meetings, is that recorded? And uh, how uh, are the attendees uh, remunerated for their time uh, in attending such meetings. Uh, the cost of the board fees, if we can get an indication in that regard. But it seems that uh, we are seeing a decrease in expenditure in quarter four. What's the explanation uh, uh, of that? And I think uh, maybe the Honorable Minister can indicate in terms of the interministerial task team that was uh, constituted to look into the issues of uh, Ingonyama transport. How far are they uh, as to date? Because uh, from my own understanding, they have not been able to have a meeting, whether with the Ingonyama transport, nor with the trustee, uh, the sole trustee being his, his majesty, uh, King uh, uh, Zoliti. So we would like to understand uh, as to the work of uh, the interministerial committee, uh, what they've been able to achieve thus far. Uh, I think, uh, honorable uh, members, that is all on uh, my side. May we hand back to the uh, chairperson of uh, the ITB, Uchaj Ngwenya, as well as uh, the acting CEO. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, Chairperson, I have noted there are a number of questions. I hope time will permit that we deal with them. So we do we... have about 15 minutes before we attend the meeting. So those questions that haven't been answered, we will ask for them to be uh, answered in writing. Uh, you may proceed. Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, uh, if I listen to the questions as asked, uh, in particular, I want to touch first on the Honorable Member Mbata and Honorable Mbabama, because their questions are somewhat interrelated in the sense that the assumption is that the projects that the ITP commits itself to are the projects that are funded by government. And Honorable Mbata says that this is government funds, it should be obvious from all the records that you have, even the budget review of October last year, you make reference of the amount that has been voted in previous years, growing steadily from 19 million up to 22 million. That amount, which is what members of your honorable committee chairperson are uh, a part of appropriation could hardly push any community project. In fact, the money from the state disappear from to the administration before we can do anything is lesser than what the budget of the ITB is. So everything else that we are talking about here 
That is money generated as a result of land use by the ITB, by the trust rather. In particular, Chair, from other questions that you have raised, even now, among other things you say, is that there are monies that are levied to the communities. We don't collect those monies. What is called tribal taxes is collected currently by Cocta of the province. We don't know what they do with that. So I want to be very clear before this committee that what we are talking about is the money that the trust generate from either leases or servitude or royalties. So everything else should revolve around that. And then this drives me to the question which says, what is the ITB or the trust rather going to do with the monies that are not used? That's a valid question. But members of this committee, Chairperson, know fully well every year that one of the requirements during the audit is that Ingonyama Trust must provide for contingent liability on municipal rates. Until that issue of who pays the rates of municipalities is resolved, we will keep on over years moving in circles because just two weeks back, one of the headlines in the Mercury was government entities all at Tewini municipalities over 600 million rand. Those government institutions are not mentioned except in Goyama Trust to say in Goyama Trust is owing 186 million rand. So what we are saying is with all the municipalities in the province of Wazulu Natal, the trust simply because it's a registered landowner in most municipalities must make provisions for municipal rates once the issues are resolved. If the trust has no money, it can be liquidated as being insolvent. Because I, 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 I stress this, Chairperson, because most questions revolve around the board has got no competence, it must be dissolved, uh, it does not know whether it's coming or going, and it's wasting the state money. That is not the case. I am not going to deal with the, the reason for the existence of the trust and so on. Uh, at this stage, I'm pleased that the Honorable Minister is present here, but there could be a different time where we can make an input on that. But what I wish to say, uh, Chairperson, is that with regards to the performance, I would partly leave this to Mr. Gabella. But what I do want to say is that we are told by this committee that we are not following the provisions of the PFMA, but no specific reference of that is brought to our attention, neither do we find that in the audited financials on yearly basis which are presented to this committee. The new format, one of the difficulties, because I think Honorable Matati spoke about the risk report that must be provided. The difficulty that we normally have is that the Treasury will provide a template of how we should prepare our report. The portfolio committee has got its own views, but those views, sometimes we get to know by, uh, of them like we have today that we should have provided for that. We do hope, Chairperson, moving forward that more information will come. So the question of what system for funds that were not used, I've explained that that the funds of Ngonyama Trust are not hidden anywhere. What is also, I think, confusing, because the impression is created that Ngonyama Trust is a multi-billion 
organization. That's not the case. It's because of the system we use. If you look at every financial year, the projection has two components. One component is what they call our accountants straight line accounting. Straight line accounting will give you a higher amount, <clears throat> but that is not actual cash. One can look at every any annual report of every year. You will find that they will say in a year the income will be 130 million. Of that, you'll find that 100 million rand, for instance, is that straight lining. And then the actual income would be 30, 30 million or so. The reason for that is this. What is called straight line accounting from the accountant, we understand they take the life of a lease, be it a commercial or residential, is 40 years, amortize it, and say if this was to be converted, if, in other words, it's a 40-year lease, they say if I were to put value in it today, this is what it would be. So what I'm saying is that is always misleading because I say I urge the honorable members to look at every financial uh, report of the Ingoyama Trust. You will see that the actual amount we receive in every year, I haven't seen as yet where the actual amount generated per year reaches even 40 million rand. Right? The actual amount would be 30 odd million rand. So the decline in TC support and drastic decrease in administration and the issue of the executive management that has been placed on special leave, maybe that may help the members of this committee, even those who are not present, to explain that. In part, <clears throat> the committee we have picked up on all the reports says don't collect money at all or leases or anything else. It doesn't say where the trust must get money from in substitution of the money that we get. So in other words, we must sit in the trust, receive no money on behalf of the trust and therefore fail to achieve the mandate which is the trust, the land must be administered for the material well benefit of the people because there is no income coming, we must, there is no money, no additional funding from the government. But the issue that I'm putting to the committee, what prompted the trust to seek a forensic investigation was firstly that there has been constant perennial irregular expenditure and no accountability, no information. More and more the activities of the trust have been undermined internally. Among others, as we currently see, for the first time in its history, it did not submit budget on time. So we wanted to investigate, not that we are suspecting anything, but we knew that there must be something wrong somewhere. We need to get an independent body, which we have done. We expect to get a report at least in the next month. To know exactly to what extent have these audit improvement plans been implemented by the staff, because things have been getting worse. Five minutes remaining. Five minutes remaining. Oh, thank you, Chairperson. Maybe then let me look at the issue of us not knowing governance and policies, we respectfully request more information in what sense, and we respectfully request also more details in terms of what law has the board violated, because we are seen as just renegades. But the rest, I would request uh, Mr. Gabella, just to, to round up. Thank you.
No, Chairperson. On the side of administration, most of the questions, I think, with time constraints, we try and provide them inviting. And some of the things are requesting the listings of passages, listing of projects, and all those other stuff. Thanks, Chair. Honorable uh, Minister, Mahmoud Deza, you want to have the last part? Honorable uh, Mahmoud Deza? Yes, Chair, I'm trying. Um, oh, okay. Thank you very much, Chairperson. I just wanted to maybe respond to just two issues uh, that were raised in respect of um, the governance that was raised by um, Honorable Matthias. I do not think uh, in terms of the legislation that governs the ITB, we do have the latitude to actually make appointments of staff for the ITB. So I wanted to clarify that. Secondly, with regards to the investigation, these are investigations that in terms of governance, the board is empowered uh, to do because the board is the one that oversees the management of the ITB. And thirdly, in terms of the Ingonyama Trust uh, Act, the minister doesn't have a representative in the board. However, the minister, together with the premier of the province of KwaZulu-Natal and Ingonyama, there is a way in which the appointment to the board is uh, designated on how that is done. So it's not like the minister has her direct uh, representative. The other matter, Chairperson, you have raised relates to the work of the IMC. As you know that the IMC was appointed by the president to engage with Ingonyama after a, a recommendation of the uh, presidential advisory panel, which recommended that um, Ingonyama Trust um, must be reviewed or uh, maybe done away with. So the president engaged with the king and then indicated that he would appoint an interministerial committee that will actually engage with the king as well as with the board. What had happened is that Minister Mtembu actually went and met uh, with the king at the behest of the president, and then there was agreement that the ministerial team will then engage with the trustee who is Isilo in this instance, clarify what the uh, their understanding of the advisory board recommendation and I also want to say, Chair, the chairperson of the advisory board, Dr. Vuyo Masati herself, actually went and met with Ingonyama and explained the report as they were the authors of the report, what made them, uh, occasion them to make the recommendation uh, that they made. The ministerial committee is still going to meet with the CLO before meeting with Ingonyama Transport. But as the minister responsible, that's why we are continuing to have the engagement, particularly arising on the issues that have been raised by this portfolio committee in respect of the board. The other process of the interministerial committee is beyond the scope of this committee, relates to the broader issues around issues of Ingonyama Trust as they were raised from the letter from Isilo. Thank you very much, Chair. I thought I needed to clarify that. Thank you, Honorable uh, Minister, uh, for your input. Let me uh, 
highlight, uh, honorable members, that uh, we continue to uh, face uh, challenges in terms of accountability of uh, the budget uh, that is afforded to uh, the ITB uh, by the department uh, in terms of uh, uh, the questions raised by the honorable members and I would like to see as to the questions that will be answered in writing if they truly satisfy the honorable members. Uh, so uh, the issues that speak uh, directly to the training that is afforded uh, to traditional councils, which traditional councils, how much, if they can be answered. But also uh, the issues uh, uh, vested around bursaries that are being afforded to youth within uh, 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 the uh, land of uh, uh, Igonyama Trust. Uh, but uh, I think uh, we uh, will uh, also need to uh, find the means and ways, uh, honorable members, of understanding the full amount that is uh, uh, able through leases, uh, whether it be through uh, the mining rights and uh, leasing agreements uh, Ngonyama Trust uh, engages on, how much of uh, money is received by the ITB through such leases? Because we are totally uh, not in the know-how as to what those funds are. But I think, uh, Honorable Minister, uh, we will allow you time and space to engage with the ITB uh, during uh, this uh, uh, month of uh, June as uh, uh, by your request. But I must highlight that uh, the committee has made recommendations that the ITB must be put under administration and we need to uh, look into the affairs of Ingonyama Trust. But I must also echo the sentiments, uh, Honorable Minister, that 26 years later into our democracy, we should be able to evaluate if the ITB has been a success case or a failure. And if it is a success case, we should be able, because we are living in a constitutional democracy that uh, recognizes other uh, uh, nations and other uh, monarchs. We should be able to replicate Ingonyama uh, trust for the other monarchs, such as His Majesty uh, King Rabulana of the Vendors, His Majesty King Skukune of the Pedis, Her Majesty uh, Queen Mjaji of Balobedu, and the other uh, monarchs around the country. But it's if we should come to a finding that the Ngonyama Trust has been a failure, we as a committee believe we should uh, be able to scrap uh, this and uh, look into uh, other uh, issues. But we will leave the minister uh, with the engagement that you will be having and we would like to engage further on these matters upon your findings. With that said, honorable members, let me thank you for this attendance of uh, this uh, portfolio committee meeting uh, on uh, the agricultural land reform and rural development. And we'd like to thank the department, the honorable minister, the DG, and the officials of the department uh, for the presentations put to us, as well as uh, the chairperson of Ingonyama uh, Transport, uh, Uchaj Nguenya, and the acting CEO, Bauka uh, Bella, and uh, Amakosi uh, within the ITP for uh, having attended. We wish you a wonderful evening and that you may navigate uh, well through the weekend that is upon us. Thank you. Good evening. Bye-bye. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank Have you a wonderful chair. evening, colleagues. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you.